Hello. Do you struggle with perfectionism? Like I've struggled all my life, really. How does that come about? And why do we struggle with perfection um, and being perfect and, and not allowing ourselves to have a weak moment or, or screw up? It's like, God forbid that we should screw up and do something wrong or say something wrong or inappropriate. And oh, oh my God, if we do, it's like the end of the world. You know, we just think about it all night long. Why do we do this? You know, it's like, it really should be that we can relax and when we screw up, we laugh at ourselves. Really, it should be that way. But because we've been raised, I feel, I'm sure you have your ideas why this is, but being raised in religions, a lot of time that, that expect everything to be perfect, that we need to be perfect. If we're not, then we're not pleasing to God. And these kind of things that go in our, our minds, we worry about what people think and they won't love me unless I'm perfect. And you guys, this it doesn't work. We, we, we can't be thinking this way. So I had this lady, I, I grew up in the Worldwide Church of God, which is kind of like Jehovah's Witness, Jewish combined. Um, we kept the Sabbath day, the Jewish holy days, kind of sort of watered down, I guess you would say. But we, I had this one gal, she listened to my last video about um, how I'm just talking about how that it would be so neat when it, if women could, um, you know, start asking for what they need, like, hey, honey, could you help me with the dishwasher, you know, get, get it loaded. But to be careful, because if you if you don't say it respectfully and he doesn't do it exactly perfectly right, then, uh, you know, he won't help you again. And just the idiosyncrasies of that. And also women, you know, becoming more. Um, empowered with like a pro prodigal 31 woman, which last time I mentioned about how that she bought and sold uh, for her husband. She's like the, the epitome of the perfect woman, right? And she was strong. She got up early in the morning to take care of her servants. Um, she uh, sold, you know, material, you know, fabric, whenever she did amazing things, uh, increasing her husband's wealth. Well, again, a woman who's going to be doing that sort of thing is going to be strong in the world. She has to go into a man's world and sell and buy, buy lands, all that. It's talking about all of that, um, just being a leader for her family and her servants. You Like I said, get up early in the morning to prepare for them. Um, so this gal, she was just loving it. And um, I'm talking about some of the pitfalls and whatnot. She said, I love your video. It's great. And then all of a sudden, the next thing you know, next day, she's having all kinds of doubt thoughts like, oh, my gosh. You know, I, I, I realize that maybe that uh, that's the reason why I this and that, and, you know, it's maybe my fault. And, and she just started all, all these scenarios began to go in her head about why things haven't gone perfectly in her life with regard to relationships. And um, it's like, see, isn't that just how it works, guys? It's like one day you're doing good and you're on top of the world and you feel like, okay, I could do anything. And the next day you're, you're, you're getting knocked down like you lose her, you know, it's like, when you have a good day, then the next day you can almost count on it. It's not going to be good because that's just how it works, isn't it? It really is. So maybe just maybe we could relax into that a little bit and just know that when you have a good day, and you're proud of yourself. You know, I, I'm doing really good. And then just know that the next day is going to challenge you. It's just how it works, isn't it? It really is. It's just how it works. Um, so this gal is making really good progress in, in her walk and, and her trying to overcome her OCD and her perfectionism. But then because of, oh man, my glass thing just broke. That's such a bummer. I'm going to need this. I'm going to have to hold my glasses while I read in, in this whole thing. Um, but, but she just, she just can't seem to uh, relax quite enough to get, you know, a, a few days of good because just right away your mind starts telling her, you know, you've got to do things better and you know, you're, you're a loser and, and all these things start going on in her heads. So, um, uh, so the, the guilt all came and she started to, uh, write a text and she wrote to me and then I wrote her back and just, I started saying that, um, Hey, you know what? You just need to relax and, um, just do the best you can. I was saying, and just don't worry about it. And all of a sudden I stopped myself like, Oh my gosh, I better not say too much about you. Just do, we just all have to do the best we can because you know, the next thought is, you know, our best is never good enough. It just never is. In fact, the Jehovah's Witnesses have it where, you know, when you go door to door and you're knocking and whatnot, well, brothers, you know, did you go as much as you could? Because, you know, uh, could you gone to, you know, two hours instead of, you know, one hour and could, or could you gone three instead of two? And, you know, really your best is never good enough. You're never getting enough hours in for Jehovah and forever and ever and ever. You're having to worry about, you know, doing everything just perfectly right. Uh, I grew up again in worldwide. So, things that we had to worry about were like uh getting the sabbath day kept exactly right so we didn't do any work at all on saturday 
and we we make sure you tithe your 10 percent and um make sure you don't uh, you know catch yourself working on those hours where you're not allowed to work during those 24 hours of sundown to sundown if you work then you feel guilty and my dad i remember growing up it was like he had just panic attacks really about um oh my gosh if anything goes wrong it's like oh my gosh you know, I must, it must be because I had to work a few minutes and then I had to go get gas on the Sabbath day and pay for things on the Sabbath day when we're not allowed to do that. Or maybe it's because I didn't pay my tithes yet because I need, I needed a few more days and I, I paid it late. And that's why these bad things were happening to me or to us. And just a dreadful way. It's just, you know, you're just never good enough for God. And if anything goes wrong, then God's mad. And, oh my gosh, you know, it's like, ugh, we just need to be rid of that sort of thinking. Um, so I just feel like we, what we need, all need to do is just kind of take a chill pill. Really, don't don't be so hard on yourself and allow yourself to make mistakes. And it, it's okay. You know, when I think about it, um, it, it just works anyway. When you're just trying to expect yourself to be perfect. When you want to be a hundred percent or you want to be a hundred percent for God, but you know, the thing is, is the truth is, is that I, 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 that kind of thinking is, is not going to get us very far because, you know, it, it's God who's w willing us and helping us, enabling us to, to overcome, to be the person that we're meant to be. And it, it says in scriptures, if you don't mind me going down the scriptures, but it is by grace that you're saved through faith. And this, and, and it, and it's this not of works, um, not, you know, it's not us. But, but it, so here it is. And this it is by grace that we're being saved, not of ourselves. Basically, it's the gift of God. So we have to accept that what's happening to us is a process. It takes time. It, it's um, going to happen not as quickly as we would like. And we're going to be overcoming and um, right, being raised bit by bit. And it's just not going to be this, um, I did it and I finally overcame and I'm, I'm finally good now and maybe now god will accept me now that i don't do things wrong anymore the certain thing i used to do i don't do that anymore maybe god is gonna love me well you know the next thing you know if you even say that or think that all of a sudden you're sort of caught into something the very next day it's like no we have to just realize that we keep surrendering and we keep letting go and we keep doing the best we can knowing that god is working this out in us god is and for it is God, so there's a scripture that says, for it is God who is working in you both to will and to do according to his good purpose. So uh, here, here's the Holman Christian Standard Bible, for it is God who is working in you, enabling you both to desire and to work out his good purpose. So, you know, I want, I want to just mention about this guy named Paul who's in the Bible. Um, you know, he, he wanted to do right. And he said that when I wish to do right, this bad is present with me. And um, you know, who is going to rescue me from this body of mine undergoing this death? Death of what? It's death of the old man, death of the old self, death of the ego, um, death of the I consciousness. That is what um, is trying to die. But he, who's going to rescue me? Because, you know, I, is, I, when I wish to do this right all the time, this bad is present with me. And I find myself doing the very thing that I wish that I would not do. That That's what I find myself doing. So you know, what to do. And it's such an interesting guy. And, you know, he, he was the one who was trying to go around having Christians put in jail and imprisoned and hunting them down. And everybody's really afraid of him and everything. But you know what I feel like? I feel like, you know, he was, he was in academia. He was, you know, he'd gone to all the, you know, schools and colleges of that day. And he, he was the best Bible student. He bragged about how he was just so perfect. You know, I do everything so perfectly. He was bragging about it. And um, all of a sudden, you know, he gets hit by a light after Jesus had died and, and he gets hit by a light and blinded him and just said, you know, like what a nice hand on his shoulder saying, Paul, Paul, no, <laughs> it was a bright, brilliant light that blinded him and said, you know, Saul, Saul, that was his original name. Why are you persecuting me and meaning me and my people um, since he's already dead at this point? So he's led back to the city where he had left from being, uh, you know, helped along in by by his guide, by um, a guy who was traveling with, because he couldn't see anything. And he did receive his sight back, but then he had to begin the process. He, he received his sight back from a man of God, and he had to begin now the process of unlearning what he had learned, 
not fun, but, but he was willing to go through the process and w- realizing that the way he'd been taught wasn't the right way. And he had to now learn the right way and humble himself. And he did. He cooperated. God began to work in him and, and flipping him upside down and taking out the things that didn't belong and teaching him the right way and making sense of everything. And it took him 14 years before he was finally out actually doing what he would call, you know, what anybody would call the preaching work. And, go, and traveling all around, but it took that long. And not only that, but it took the, the Christians that he'd been persecuting that while to forgive him probably too, and needed to go on the, like that. So um, anyway, so so again, one day you get excited and then the next day you're gonna be knocked down. Okay, so don't, don't forget, that's how it works, okay? But don't worry about it because see, it's again, it's that I'm doing this and I'm doing that. No, we are cooperating with God who is doing the work. Okay. So it, it, again, it says that um, it is by grace you're saved through, through grace. It's not of ourselves. It's a gift of God. And it ends with lest any man should boast. And that seems weird, but boasting, it, it's not going to happen that way. Whatever you want and you really, 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 really want, it's going to elude you. That is the way it works. And it's, it's a humbling process too, because you know, you do the very best you can. And then um, some days you do good and, you know, you're just plugging along with God. And then the next day you're getting knocked down and you just simply get back up and you say, you know what, old devil, you can accuse me all you want, but God's still working on me. And, and one day he's going to work this out and I'm not going to have to have the struggle anymore. But for right now, I'm going to grace myself. I'm not going to be mad at myself for not doing it perfectly today. And um, I, I messed up a little. Um, I maybe didn't have a right heart about that. And I, I got mad about that and I lost my peace here and, you know, and, but Hey, uh, then I'm, I'm just going to start over. I have a new moment and the next moment I'm starting again. Now I've got the rest of the day. I'm going to try the rest of the day. I'm going to do the best I can. God is working with me. I mean, at this moment, everything is good. Everything is well. And you just let it go, let it go, relax. Instead of what maybe what we who are perfectionists tend to do, and that is beat ourselves up and say that God can't be happy with me now. See, I failed him. I didn't, I didn't do everything right. I, I'm just, I'm never going to be good enough. I'm just never going to measure up. He's never going to be pleased with me. I can't do it. I, it. It's just impossible. And we just have this feeling like, you know, he can never accept me. See, that's our programming. That's what we learned in the worldwide. It's what we learned in whatever, wherever you came from. But it's not the truth. So I want to tell you something. There's a really great song. I, I was thinking about all of this. And... Um, getting myself ready to go right here. And all of a sudden the song pops in my head while I'm getting ready. And it, it's this one. It's uh, Billy Joel's Just the Way You Are. So it goes like this. Um, the part I'm going to read, that's the part I like, that was coming in my head. It said, um, I, uh, this is different. Do you see, uh, oh, what will it take till you believe in me the way that I believe in you? So I think that was the first thought that came in. And the, and the song, what will it take till you believe in me the way that I believe in you? I said, I love you. And that's forever. And um, so then, so I don't want clever conversation. I never, uh, so I just want someone that I can talk to. I, I love you just the way you are. Oh, and that song just kept going around and around and around in my head. It was just so wonderful. Um, I said, I love you. That's forever. This I promise from the heart. Mm -hmm. I couldn't love you any better. I love you just the way you are. So I just love that. I don't want clever conversation, meaning I don't need these special little prayers. I don't need to be all clever and wisely said and be in thou and all that kind of stuff. I just want someone I can talk to. And, um, I, I love you just the way you are. So anyway, I just love that. It's just so cool to me. Um, so anyway, so just wonder, go back to uh, Paul. So he did, he humbled himself. And, and so I just want to bring it up. that This guy was like talking about how that everyone in the Old Testament were just so good, so saintly. And like, no, I remember King David, he, you know, he was a Bible character. He did all kinds of things wrong all kinds of things. And, and, and most of the one that everybody knows about is that he wanted this woman, Bathsheba, 
Annie put her husband out there to be killed so that he could have her um, as as his wife. I think he already got her pregnant. I think that's how it went there. But anyway, um, and then he hid it for a whole year until the prophet had to come and just kind of bring it up and, you know, clean the slate and get things going again. But um, he ignored it all. So then we got King David. How about King Hezekiah? Great king. He didn't do everything right either. He did. He made mistakes. Um, Peter. Um, you know, he denied Jesus, and but Jesus already knew it and told him ahead of time. Um, Paul, you just know, he tried to kill Christians. He, he made mistakes. He got mad. He blew his temper, got mad at, you know, somebody in the New Testament. Um, Barnabas. No, 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 it wasn't Barnabas. It was John Mark. Um, and and he he had all kinds of things that he was you know, trying to overcome. And yet he was serving us during that time, not being perfect. God works with imperfect people, imperfect men. We can't expect ourselves to be perfect. Not even the characters in the Bible. Naomi, you know, um, she lost her husband, her, her, her sons. And that, that day that was considered that you were not blessed of God. You know, she didn't have any children from any of her da daughters because her sons were, uh, you know, they couldn't, I don't know, they, I guess they couldn't have babies. So she never had any grand grandkids ever. And, you know, anyway, she had wrong attitudes. She was discouraged. And look, she's she's human. And so we don't have perfect characters in the Bible. Why do we expect ourselves to be perfect? We aren't going to be. And God is going to work with us whether we're perfect or not. And he's going to love you just the way you are. So what can we do to help ourselves? And um, what what's going to make things better? So I'm just going to say this. Okay, so first of all, when you screw up, just know that on the day that, you know, when, when you're going to do good one day, you just know the next day and maybe just maybe it's not going to be as great and you're not going to get mad about it. You're just going to know that this is just how it works. And But your goal is to say, I love myself anyway, and God loves me just the way I am. And he doesn't need me to do special prayers and, and uh, obeisances and beating myself on the back. None of that. Just simply turn around and just, you know, let it go, ask forgiveness, whatever, and just get right back up and just keep right on going. And, and that's all you need to do. Don't, don't do this beating up thing, this perfectionism thing. You're not going to be perfect. So, um, so you, you sit and you just relax, um, try to do it, you know, as much as you can, you know, as much as you can. Okay. The bathroom is a great place to do it, but you just relax and breathe, deep breathe at work. Just go in the bathroom, sit deep, breathe. And, you know, uh, one guy said three breaths in and five out. In through the nose, three, and then out. Just keep doing that uh, several different times. And then you can say this if you want to. Be still and know that I am God. Be still and know that I am God. Just say it a couple different times. And all of a sudden, I don't know why. When you say that, it just calms you. I, I don't know why, but it works. Just try it. Um, another thing you can do is to go to a place in your mind where you have been, where you remember that God was right there. Like for me, it was um, at the ocean at, in Bodega Bay in California. There's this ridge out there and it's um, got a whole place up on the hill that you walk on. And down below are succulent plants, goes all the way down to the ocean. Then there's rocks down there with, you know, the water splashing up. And you can see the seals playing and working there. And, and usually in the morning, all the way until about noon, it's foggy. So it's kind of in and out foggy. And you just feel this sense of, I don't know, it's magical. It's mystical. And I, I feel God close. The smells get me. Oh, my gosh. This salt water and everything that smells like up north. I just, I love it. And um, I melt. Uh, Half Moon Bay, I've had the same experience there, sitting up on the high ridge and the ocean's way down there, hearing the, the waves crashing down and hearing the seagulls and all of that going all around and um, smells. And I just, I just melt. And that's where I feel close to God. I can have a great time with God when I'm in those places. Now, where is that place for you? I don't know. Some people say it's, it's to, to imagine going into a gated gar garden. And you go in and you, and you, it's your garden, it's your private secret garden. Um, and you just go in amongst them and, you know, you just talk to God and you smell flowers and you just be with God in the garden and, you know, imagine whatever you want to do in that garden, but that you're with God in that garden. 
um, I don't know. That doesn't do anything for me. I, I don't, I can't get into the garden thing. It just doesn't work for me. But what is it for you? Where do you, where have you been that you just feel like everything was good there? Everything was peaceful there. Everything was perfect there. I, I want to go there and I just want to be with God. So do that. Go in your mind and do that. It really works beautifully. So um, anyway, that, that was that one. And actually, I think that's all I had to say. Just, just where would you like to go for that? But it'll calm you really, really well. And just take, do your deep breathing there too. And um, just, you know, pray from your heart, say from your heart. And when things don't go right and, and you mess up, just know that God is right there to say, I love you just the way you are. We're going to work this out. Don't you worry. I'm still working on you. You know, um, it's God is causing us to will and to do according to his good will, his good purpose. And he's working on it. And it's for God. So it says that, um, that, that God will do this work in us and he'll be faithful to complete it. And um, so we can count on it and uh, we just do the best we can. Right. And I know, I know the best is not good enough. I know how we are guys. I do, but you just got to let that thinking go. That's, that's your old uh, ego mind trying to beat you up, telling you that, you know, you're, you're just never good enough. And um, God can't be happy with you now. I mean, man, you just, you just, you know, told him I'm going to, I'm going to do it now, Lord, I'm going to do it. And, um, and now today you're already, you know, messing up, you know, you're already losing your peace. You're already, um, I don't know, not feeling the way that you think you should somehow, whatever that is, it's not never good enough, is it? So we can't allow that voice. We got to say no to that voice and just let it go. Just relax, breathe, start over. No, it's a new moment, new day, whatever it is. New days are great, but new moments are great. That's when you can start over too. You don't have to wait till the next day. So anyway, I think that's it. Um, I've been on long enough and thanks for listening. Have a great day and um, you're good enough. God loves you just the way you are. All right. Over and out until next time. Oh, by the way, my name is Angela. I'm an Empower Her Life coach. And if you would like to have a session with me and talk about anything we've talked about here today, feel free. You can reach out to me at Angela's Inspirations with an S on the end of both those words at gmail.com. And my website is just about ready to go uh, uh, back up again. We've been working on it and you can schedule a time in there too. Um, as soon as that's up, it will be really soon now. Maybe by the time you get this, it will be. But anyway, um, I guess that's it. I am just so excited to help uh, women to get their voices and to feel good about themselves, to empower them to be their best selves and not just women, but I'm, I'm glad to help men too. Whoever's listening to this, um, welcome. And I hope you got something out of it today. Thank you so much. And we'll talk to you next time. Thank you.